Welcome to my channel, The Binge Eating Therapist. I'm Sarah, former binge eater turned psychotherapist. And in this video, I'm gonna to attempt to answer the question, how do you get better at feeling your feelings? In order to do this, and because it's such a big question, I decided to do something a little bit different. I put a post up in a Facebook therapist group asking other therapists, what advice would you give to someone who wanted to get better at feeling their feelings? I had about two dozen responses and there were a few themes that kept emerging. So I thought I would share these themes with you now. But why listen to what therapists have got to say? Well, we're the ones who are working day in, day out in people's emotional lives. So we tend to see where people get stuck and where people have their breakthroughs. This morning, I was chatting with Carly Radford, one of my therapist friends, and she said something that was really interesting because I'd never thought about it like this. And she said, when you look at kids and how they experience their feelings, they experience their feelings with their whole bodies. Like when kids are so excited, you see it in their whole bodies, their whole bodies are responding in that way. And when kids are angry, their whole bodies are tense. And when they're sad, their whole bodies are just slump. And as we get older, our emotional experiences seem to just get smaller and smaller. And it's highly likely that this happens because of, you know, excited kids are told to calm down. Sad kids, you try and cheer the kid up, like cheer up, cheer up, have, have this, have an ice cream, do this, do that. Like we're constantly being groomed and conditioned into how emotions should be expressed. So we take our cues from the adults around us and then we become like the adults. So when I'm doing a video like this about how to feel your feelings, we're not just talking about those difficult, horrible, sticky feelings that you get that you wanna run away from. We're also talking about feelings like joy and happiness and love and excitement and all these great feeling feelings that we can enjoy feeling. I don't think we can just choose what we feel, that we can just stop feeling one emotion. In order to try to reduce a feeling we really don't like, I think we end up squashing down all our feelings and we make our emotional experience just much more dull and muted. And feelings can seem really complicated, especially when you don't understand them, you don't know what you're feeling or why you're feeling it. So one of the first things that came up from these therapists was this idea of looking at feeling your feelings as a practice. It's a skill that we develop. If it's not something that you are taught how to do when you're little, you're not gonna know how to do it as an adult. And I would just add the idea of choosing to practice for the first time, like around your binging, just before you're about to binge, and now's the time I'm gonna practice feeling my feelings. That's the hardest time to do it. So one of the therapists was saying how she sets check-in times with her clients where twice a day, they sit down and they check in, okay, what do I notice? What am I feeling? So this is not just about managing your feelings around food. It's about experiencing and processing your feelings throughout all of your life. And the next one that came up from the therapist is this idea that yes, we're gonna have resistance to feeling. We have resistance to pain and discomfort and we're kind of programmed and wired to try to avoid that. But sometimes we end up in this resistance place with feelings that aren't actually gonna harm us and if we stopped resisting them, it wouldn't be nearly as painful or as uncomfortable as we think it would be. That idea that the thought of doing something is sometimes worse than just doing the thing. So for many of us, our challenges around particular feelings, again, go back to early experiences. Were you punished for being angry? Maybe you're someone who believes that anger is not a safe feeling. So you've worked so hard to just suppress your anger and now you just don't even feel like you're an angry person. You never feel it, you don't get in touch with it. Or if you grew up in a family where no one was really showing their emotions, you learn this message that actually like big emotions are wrong, like life is about controlling your emotions and that's how you know that you're winning and you're safe. So rather than this idea of, uh, getting better at feeling your feelings and going like, right, I just have to do all the things to get better at feeling my feelings. Taking a bit of time to reflect on where the resistance is and to expect the resistance to be there and to not judge the fact that you may be resistant to certain feelings, even if your rational mind is telling you it's okay. If it still doesn't feel okay, there might be some earlier stuff going on. The therapist also said, and this one came up a lot, they talked about the importance of identifying your feelings. Finding words and language creates meaning, and meaning allows us to process things. If someone holds out a packet of chewing gum to you, you have to process what that means. If someone waves a packet of chewing gum under your nose, most of us know what that means is, do you want some chewing gum? But you need to interpret what that means and then decide on your reaction. And it's the same with feelings. 
someone holding out the chewing gum is like a sensation going on. Like there's something you're aware of that doesn't feel quite right or doesn't feel quite comfortable. Your brain then needs to interpret what does that mean? If you're feeling very anxious just about the feelings themselves, your brain might start freaking out about the feeling and now the feeling's getting even bigger. And many people would describe having really uncomfortable feelings that they do not have the language for. And maybe some of you have heard of it before, but there's something called the emotion wheel. And you can just put the emotion wheel into Google and get a copy of it. And it lists, it categorizes feelings into some core emotions and then some more complex, deeper emotions as the wheel goes out. There's also a sensations wheel, which I'll put a link to below, which helps you to identify the feelings based on what the sensations are that are going on in your body. If you have never been taught to pay attention to your emotional experience and interpret your emotional experience, it's not gonna just come naturally. So there are these tools and resources out there that you can use to help you do it. Several therapists also stress the importance of the body experience. This idea of doing body scans, checking in with where these sensations are in your body. Can you describe the sensations? Is it a still sensation? Is it moving? Is it a tight one? Is it expansive? Is it swirling? Some people get colours and smells that are associated with sensations if their brains work that way. Mine doesn't. I'm a much more literal thinker. But if colours and shapes and all these more abstract ways of understanding sensation, so when we're trying to understand sensation and put language on it, we're trying to turn what is this embodied experience into sound and words and symbols and that can feel really clunky. So it's not surprising that many people struggle to do this. It's not a natural thing to do. And I see so many people who think that they are, they're the only ones that are this bad at feeling their feelings and knowing what they're feeling. And I just wanna say that I think it is much more common than you probably think. And the fifth theme that emerged with the therapist was this idea of, I'm gonna kind of lump these two together because I do think they're very similar, is acceptance and curiosity. It's very difficult to really be curious from a place of judgment, from a place of resistance. So there was, <laughs> the word space came up a few times, this idea of welcoming feelings and allowing space for feelings. Therapists, we, we love this word space. We use it all the time. I've never used the word space more in the preceding years than when I became a therapist. We talk about safe spaces. We talk about space to feel. We talk about boundaries and space. There's something about this idea of space because resistance and fear and that is so contracting and space and expansion it's it's opening it is um it allows room for new meanings new ideas and new sensations to emerge when we are busy and distracted all the time we don't allow other things to come forward and get our attention we tend to just push everything to the back of our mind and then what we experience is this sort of ad like a non-specific agitation that is, just feels uncomfortable, but we can't make meaning of it because it's so many things clustered together because there hasn't been space for things to arrive, be accepted and welcomed, processed, meaning-making, responded to and allowed to pass through it. There can be a lot of fear around acceptance because it's this idea if I accept a feeling, I let it in, it's going to take over, it's never going to leave. And that is rarely the case. I think the, the one thing, the one thing from this video, if you take away, that I believe would absolutely transform, transform? One thing that could really transform your experiences of your emotions would be to let go of judging them. What you feel is not you. It doesn't necessarily mean anything about you. People feel guilty for feeling angry. People feel fear at feeling sadness. There's this layering of emotions that goes on which makes our emotional experience more complex and then we find it even harder to make sense of it and to experience pain and discomfort with no meaning, that is the terrifying place to be. If we have meaning, we can experience discomfort, we can experience pain and we will have a very different experience of it. The example I often like to use, I've used it before and I'll use it again because I love it, if someone's walking down the street and they are hit with labor pains, if they are pregnant, yes, it's gonna hurt a lot, but they're gonna go like, okay, this is the labor pains, I need to go to the hospital and I'm gonna have a baby. If someone walks down the street and they were hit with labor pains and they weren't pregnant and they didn't have any reason why they were feeling this way, they would think they were gonna die. In both situations, the pain is the same, 
but the meaning of it is completely different, which then transforms the experience of it. And there's just one little add-on that I want to mention that a therapist pointed out, which I think is just worth a, a mention for some people. There's something called alexithymia. And what alexithymia is, it's not a diagnosis, it's not a condition, it's an experience that some people have whereby it's, it's sometimes referred to as like emotional blindness, where they don't know what they're feeling. Now, many of us struggle at times to know what we're feeling, to find the language for it and all of that, but this is kind of at a, a higher level than that. And it's more prevalent with people on the autism scale, about 50 to 80% of people with autism uh, also have alexithymia. And they reckon about 10% of people who are not on the autism scale may struggle um, to actually be able to do this. And the two things that make alexithymia more likely is, as I mentioned, being on the autism scale, but also if you've experienced emotional neglect or abuse. If you think that this might relate to you, I'm gonna link a video below which tells you a bit more about it. There's a lot out there, but a lot of it is very opinion-based. The video I'm gonna to link to below is much more evidence-based about what we actually know about alexithymia, what it is, and who it might be affecting. With all this said, I just want to say thank you to my therapist, Cyber Buddies, for their wisdom and helping to shape the content of this video. And thank you for watching. If you wanna know a bit more about emotions, particularly around emotions and eating, you might wanna check out one or both of these videos, and I will see you on the next one.